Hey guys, and welcome back to the Gen Z stage here at COGX. It has been amazing. We have spoken about mental health. We've spoken through um, all about online data, and I'm super excited to introduce you to the next session. I'm your MC. I'm your host, Hayley Melenda. I'm an international keynote speaker, author, and change agent, and I'm the proud ambassador of One Young World. So I have the opportunity and the pleasure of introducing Kieran for the next session who is going to be your moderator and we are just going to be talking through career talks a journey through data science so kieran i'm going to hand it over to you thank you very much Haley. hi everyone and welcome to this career talk on journeying into data science i'm kieran and i'll be a moderator for this session uh, today we're really lucky to be joined by dr ines marasuk uh, who is currently working as a senior data science consultant at quantum bank part of the mckinsey and co here, she currently develops data science products and solutions for some of the world's largest organizations, helping them adopt machine learning at scale to transform their businesses. Inez graduated from Oxford in 2017 with a PhD in computer science. And while there, she also co-founded the Oxford Women in Computer Science Society and Oxbridge Women in Computer Science Conference, two really impressive and prestigious organizations. In a career so far, Ines has worked across industries including finance, insurance, and pharma, and most recently led Quantum Bank's uh, Black's Fairness and Ethics R&D initiative. So thank you very much for joining us today, Ines. Uh, thank you, Kieran, for that kind introduction. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. OK, perfect. I should first of all apologize for some of the background noise. Uh, this is on my side, some of the drilling happening outside. And maybe because this is a career talk, this, uh, this might actually be my first lesson, uh, being flexible and continuing even when circumstances aren't ideal. So I'm going to continue as planned and I hope you can hear me fine. Uh, perfect. So I'm so excited to be here today on the Gen Z stage. Uh, this year we are having a virtual conference for the first time. Um, and uh, I'm sure this has been a different experience for everyone, but but I really am really excited to uh, about connecting with all of you now and certainly during the Q and A session later on. So to introduce myself, my name is Ines. I'm a senior data science consultant at Quantum Black McKinsey and Company. Uh, at Quantum Black, I work with some of the world's largest organizations helping them adopt machine learning at scale to improve their businesses and, and change their performance. So the real question is, you know, how did I get here? Um, so, um, you know, 10 years ago when I was studying uh, for my, for my uh, when I was studying for my uh, degree, when I was in high school, uh, this job didn't even exist, the job that I do today. And so how did I get here? And I think for many of you and, and Kieran, you know, I am sure uh, th this will come across in some of the questions that the audience is sharing with us. Many of you today are doing jobs that, you know, didn't, uh, we're going to do jobs in 10 years that, that don't exist today. So how can we prepare ourselves for this new changing world? Um, and so today I want to share you a bit about my journey. How did I get to do what I do today? So let's start from the beginning. I was born in Croatia. And as a student in Croatia, when I was your age, and I'm sure we have a range of uh, ages here today, I understand from 13 to 19 uh, are many of our audience members. I studied mathematics uh, and science, and I was really into math competitions. You know, I spent a lot of time preparing for these math competitions, and I had a life goal. I was always a planner. So my life goal was to be a university professor in mathematics. Uh, and towards that goal, I was planning on doing a PhD in mathematics. So I came to Oxford to study mathematics. Um, and while I was at Oxford, um, I also took advantage of, um, of, of many of the opportunities I had. And in addition to taking some of the mathematics courses that I was always planning on taking, I always loved probability, I loved statistics. Uh, I also took some of the courses in the computer science department. This was something new to me. I had not studied computer science before. And what was really interesting is discovering that some of the mathematics that I have been studying up until that point had really interesting applications. And so I took some courses in machine learning and artificial intelligence, and this was back in 2012. Uh, when, when these topics weren't as popular or as widely discussed uh, um, 
in the, in the general population. And so there was a sense of excitement around these topics, but certainly they weren't as widely covered as they are today. But I saw there something that really intrigued me. I saw there some of the very interesting math that I had been studying up until that point, but I also saw you know, new and interesting applications. And so when it came time to actually choose my PhD topic, I applied for a PhD in computer science. And this brings me to my first lesson, which is have a long-term goal, but be open to reassessing it. So as I mentioned, my long-term goal was, was to do a PhD in mathematics, but I was always on the lookout for new opportunities and I was constantly reassessing why is it that I wanted to do a PhD in mathematics? Why is it that I wanted to be a university professor in mathematics? And so when I discovered computer science and I discovered that you know, there's similar topics to what I was planning on studying, but, but slightly more perhaps uh, new and with some immediate practical applications in the field of artificial intelligence, I kind of pivoted my goal slightly. So I still did a PhD, but I decided to do it in a different topic. So the lesson here is have a long-term goal by all means, have something that you're working towards, but reassess it over time because the world is changing and what was the right decision a few years ago may not be the right decision for you right now. And especially as the world is evolving faster and faster, this is becoming a more and more important consideration. So I started my PhD in, in computer science. And even though it had been, as I mentioned, my life goal to be a university professor, um, I never did a full-time academic job until that point. I studied in high school, I studied during my undergraduate degree, where you take courses uh, based on knowledge that was already developed for decades or perhaps centuries. The goal of a PhD is to do new and original research, to answer questions that nobody had answered before. Um, and so this was my, my opportunity to do full-time research and I fully immersed myself in it. And I also did some teaching, I taught some graduate courses. And this actually brings me to lesson number two, keep an eye out on opportunities around you. So as I mentioned, I was fully focused on, on doing my PhD, especially during the academic year. But during the summer, I took the opportunity to do some, some internships. So I took some internships in industry where I had a chance to see how some of the research that I was working on in academia was being applied and uh, have a chance to see immediate practical applications and see kind of how how the world of industry, how the real world uh, is, is applying artificial intelligence. And so as I was approaching the end of my PhD and really thinking about that next step, uh, because I took those other opportunities, I could make um, a really more, much more informed decision because I had done research for a couple of years and I had spent some time working in industry. And so I decided that what I actually was most interested in is developing machine learning products and seeing how uh, they impact the world. And so when it came time to graduate three and a half years ago, I decided to pursue an industry career. And so I joined Quantum Black as a data scientist where I, over the last three and a half years, I had a chance to work with some of the world's largest organizations, helping them adopt machine learning at scale to improve their businesses and, and improve their performance. I worked across industries. I worked in finance, insurance, pharma, even elite sport. So I've had a chance to cover a range of different topics and industries. I continued being very interested in research and two topics I became interested in in particular that, um, that I didn't study during my PhD, but, but that became really important in the last couple of years are machine learning, transparency and fairness. So machine learning transparency aims at understanding how a machine learning algorithm makes the decisions that it does. So if you think about an algorithm that automatically screens CVs um, incoming for a job application and puts them in two piles, one pile saying these CVs meet the job requirements and the other one saying these CVs do not meet it, a natural question is how did this algorithm make those decisions? Machine learning is used in increasingly more and more um, consequential applications, 
CV screening for job applications being one of them, autonomous vehicles being another one. Healthcare, can we predict the progression of a certain disease? These decisions can significantly alter the course of someone's life. So these are really important decisions. And so the goal of machine learning fairness is to make sure that the solutions we develop are safe, are reliable, and work equally well for the full spectrum of the population, regardless of what you look like or where you come from. So these two topics, machine learning transparency and machine learning fairness, are topics I have been working on a lot over the last few years, and I think are going to be increasingly important um, topics to, to study. As I was uh, continuing in my career as a data scientist, I have started really thinking about what I want to do uh, next and what do I enjoy working on our projects. And I've realized that the, the aspects of the work that I enjoy um, the most is actually thinking about which problems um, are most important for us to solve and which problems can also be tackled using machine learning. Which brings me to my lesson number three, focus on your strengths. I'm very lucky to work in an organization that allows me to do the work that I love and that allows me to focus on my strengths and that gives me open feedback. And this is my advice to all of you. We all have strengths and areas of development. Uh, and first of all, it's really nice to work in an organization where you get that feedback openly. But also a lot of us focus often on our areas of development. They're important, but what I would advise you is to also focus on our, your areas of strengths and continue becoming even better in those. I believe this is one of the keys to finding a career that you truly enjoy and can thrive in. So before I wrap up, I'm just going to briefly remind you of these three lessons that I wanted to share with you today. Lesson number one, have a long-term goal. However, be open to changing it. Continuously reassess it and change it as you go on. Goal number two and lesson number two would be to keep an eye out on opportunities around you. What was the right decision for you a few years ago may not be the right decision now. The world is changing. Every year, every month, new, technology come, new technologies come up. And as you make big decisions in your career, such as uh, what to study, which subject, which school, uh, whether to apply for an internship or, and what kind of internship, um, where to pursue your careers, it's really important to consider where you are right now and what the world is looking like and what's, what are likely to be some big opportunities in the years to come. And lesson number three, focus on your strengths. By all means, think both about strengths and areas of development, but try to further improve in your strengths. These are the things that make you unique. And these are the things that can really enable you to thrive in your chosen career. So with that, I'm going to uh, wrap up my uh, brief uh, journey through my own career through data science. Uh, I hope uh, some of the lessons that I've shared um, will help you as you make decisions on the next steps in your education, perhaps summer projects, for some of you even internships and careers. We have a Q&A session in a couple of minutes, so I really hope many of you share questions uh, and I would love to get through as many of them um, as I can. So thank you everyone and I look forward to reconnecting on the other side during the Q&A session. Ines, that was amazing. Thank you so much for your insight. So as she had say, as she had stated, we are going to be having a Q and A in about fifty minutes, where Kieran is going to come on and introduce you. So guys, make sure you come back in fifteen minutes to kind of regroup, so you have time to stretch, to drink water, to breathe, to do your little exercise, whatever you need to do to keep yourself awake. Because the next session, the Q and A session, is about to be amazing. So uh, Kieran's going to be the person to introduce that at 3 p.m. So see you later, guys. Want access to more COGX videos? Subscribe now for free at cogx.co.